our dear students, I would like to welcome you to lesson three, and uh, we are still looking at uh, the anatomy of the rat. And in this particular lesson, we are going to do one major thing, and that is to identify the sex. Yes, so sex identification. How do you tell that this rat is female or male? So let's start with the female. We only have two sexes. We have male and female. Those are the two sexes that we have for the rats. So if it is a female, these are the structures that you would expect to see externally or even internally. But for now, let's start with the, some of the external features that you can easily use to recognize the sex of our rat. So if it is a female, you should be able to see the vulva, uh -huh. uh, the clitoris, that one constitutes what we call the external genitalia. What you can see from outside, the external genitalia, the vulva and the clitoris. And then you should also be able to see the tits or the nipples, usually five or six from the ventral view the ventral side of the animal so when you see those things you should be able to conclude that this specimen is a female rat the vulva and the clitoris are on the ventral sides of the groin the groin region yeah just between the hind limbs around there they have uh, the longitudinal slit the vulva on the ventral side of the groin. They have four pairs of the tits on the ventral side, four, five, or six. Some have actually up to six pairs. Um, and this one is bare outlets for the mammary glands. So what we are talking about, the uh, where the milk passes during breastfeeding. So that is what we are talking about. You can have those structures you are seeing there you can see the the pectoral group of the nipples and then the inguinal group the pectoral are those on the thorax the thoracic side and then the inguinal towards the groin region and when you look at them critically you realize that they are pointed they are cylindrical they are projected from the main body surface and then they do not have hair on them and they are either five, four, five, or six. Yes, depending on the animal. The numbers may vary depending on the developmental structure of the animal. Uh, then the vulva, when you look at it critically, if you are to describe it, you realize that it is round, uh, it is open, uh, it is also elastic with a moist inner lining. So when you look at it, you can observe that critically and uh, see what we have talked about. The adaptations are that it's moist to reduce friction during copulation because you know it is uh, an opening towards the vagina where copulation takes place, so it ought to be moist. And then it is open to allow exit of materials and also fertilization to take place. I told you it is the entrance to the vagina and therefore the moisture is very important and even being open the moisture is to reduce friction during copulation to minimize injury and so on and then also the open it's open to allow entry or penetration or copulation uh, fertilization to occur yes which is very important for the process of reproduction so you can see there in detail the parts uh, the nipples, we say they are of two major groups, where we have the pectoral group of the nipples, uh, which are located on the chest area, and then we have the inguinal group, which are located uh, towards the groin. And there are either four, five, or six pairs of nipples. So, we can now at least identify the female. Can't we? We can we can identify the female rat in case we come across it. You should be able to identify. 
the main structures being the nipples, the vulva, and the clitoris. Yes, the rest of the structures resemble the male and the female, but those are unique to majorly the females. So then the males, what do we use for identifying them? So for the males, there is a projection, which is called the penis, which has a retractable skin called the prepuce that can be folded backwards and forth. So when you get an organism, a rat with that, which is usually also uh, around the groin region, between the two groins, uh -huh. then they have scrotal sacs, which are usually large sacs containing the the, 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 the testes. And then uh, scrotal sacs and the prepuce covering the penis. You may not easily see the penis unless you retract the prepuce, but you can see the prepuce itself, that skin, the foreskin covering the, the penis. Uh, in human beings, those people who do circumcision, that is the skin that they remove from uh, those boys, the prepuce, and then you, you, will, you will be called a circumcised person. So, but for the rats, similarly, they have that uh, structure there. Uh, then we have the structures now in detail, the scrotal sacs. Those sacs are usually elongated, they are swollen, they are covered uh, by a flap of skin bearing scanty hair hanging outside the body cavity. So the significance of what we have talked about is that they are swollen for storing and production of more sperms, sperm cells. Of course, that is where the sperms are produced from the testes, and the testes are, are housed, they are encased in the scrotal sacs. They are covered by scanty hair to maintain a favorable temperature for sperm production. Remember, sperms are not produced at high temperature. They are usually produced at relatively a temperature lower than that of the body, about two to three degrees lower than the body temperature. That's why they are always out of the main body cavity and also possessing scanty hair so that more heat is lost. Yes, so you can see there, there are usually two scrotal sacs corresponding to two testes. Then the penis, I told you the penis can be seen when you retract the prepuce, but externally you would easily see the prepuce. But let's talk about the penis for now. Posteriorly, located below the tail, is covered by a sheath of skin called the prepuce, protecting it from mechanical damage. The penis is usually short, uh, and that of course enables it to copulate, to effectively penetrate through the female uh, vagina, to deposit the sperms so that fertilization can take place, which is a very important process in reproduction in rats. So when you look at these two organisms, can you identify which one is a female or which one is male? When you look at them externally, yes, you can identify that. The one on the left with the urinogenital aperture, I mean the, the prepuce, the scrotum, is the male. Then the one without the scrotum, but it has the vaginal aperture, the vulva, and the nipples, that one is the female. So it should be easier for you to identify the sex but at this level, we don't just appreciate you for identifying the sex, but also for giving us reasons why the, the, the animal belongs to that sex. So when you say it is a female, you should be able to defend why you have said it's female. There should be structures that you have seen that really qualify this organism to become a female or male. Are you able to describe those structures? Are you able to give significance for the description? That at this level is what we are looking forward to see from a student. Not just identifying and you know, that's what everyone can do that. But as a, a good biology student who's going to become a, 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 a senior scientist in the future, you should be able to go an extra mile. So, but thank you very much for now. And I want to meet you in lesson four. Thank you.